Hello everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I would like to go over the five ways to reduce the amount of failures that you see in your hospital. Now, these five ways to reduce failures require a proactive repair program instead of a reactive repair program. What exactly does that mean? In a proactive repair program, many problems are detected and handled before the users are even aware that there's a problem. In a reactive repair program, the repairs are only done once a user somewhere cares enough to submit a work order. Then the technician goes and eventually does the repair. The journey to a proactive repair program is a lot like a hill. Once you start a proactive plan, there's extra stress and grief as the culture and work habits change. But as you crest the top of the hill, your job will get easier. Your customers will trust you more. You'll have fewer demand work orders and stat calls. And in the end, you'll be a much stronger team in your shop. If you commit, everyone benefits. Now let's get right into the list. Let's start it right out with number five. Verify repairs before returning to service. Verify all the work performed by a vendor before returning the item to service. Vendors are fallible. They might not leave an item at a doctor's preferred settings. Some cables might be unplugged or the item might not even turn on. Check your equipment before wheeling it down to your customer only to break their hearts when it's not ready to be used. Do a complete check after self repairs. You are fallible. Remember that physical damages usually have obvious and not so obvious problems. If a case is cracked and a touchscreen needs repaired, perhaps the power transformer also broke loose on the power supply or the motherboard. Do a complete opened up visual inspection and a full function and calibration check when there are signs of rough use. Staff are very suspicious of any device that comes back from repair. Even little issues will be treated like an emergency if there's a callback. Number four, proper equipment labeling after a failure. Part one is the user. Offer user training on proper equipment reporting and tagging after a failure. We want to know who's a witness to the event, what specifically happened to the device in question, and when did the event take place. Equipment cannot be tested correctly if we don't know the specifics. Many wasted thousands of dollars are spent every year on manufacturer inspections where they report no problem found. Part two is the biomed. Tag every item that enters a shop with as much specific information as possible, including what you've diagnosed the problem to be. We want to know the item ID or the serial number, who brought it into the shop, the date it came into the shop, the initial finding, and the post-diagnostics update. And if there's a status delay due to parts, etc., put that on the tag or label too. If an item is not able to be secured in a shop, make sure it's locked out with the lockout tagout kit and it's tagged with specifics and it's documented in the lockout binder. Equipment ending up back in service prematurely puts the patient and users at risk, not to mention the wasted man hours on inventory sweeps, extra paperwork, incident reports, and remedial training. Tag your equipment correctly and ensure that the users are trained to fulfill their obligation to the equipment reporting process. Number three, eliminate Band-Aid repairs. Now you guys might have heard me say this before, if you do not replace a part or find the definite cause of a failure, it's a Band-Aid fix. And as I've said before, Band-Aid fixes always come back. And with them is more stress for everyone, redundant paperwork, extra man hours that are now lost. Don't use electrical tape. Replace a power cord that keeps falling out instead of pushing it in deeper to the socket. Change those batteries that prematurely died instead of leaving them to charge overnight and hopefully they'll recover. Use zip ties when installing new cabling and power supplies and ship an item out to the manufacturer if you can't find a failure. Stop the band-aid repairs. If you don't have time to do it right the first time, you'll have plenty of time to do it right the second time. Number two, non-physical damage failures require like model equipment inspections. Like models tend to fail in similar ways at similar times. If you have dead batteries in one device, you're probably gonna have dead batteries in other devices that are the same model. 
If you have loose panels, drifting booms or lights, looser pulled equipment connection ports, or even fasteners missing, re-inspect similar items that are in your inventory. They'll usually have the same problems. Use failures to guide you to the items that need more attention. The number one single greatest way to reduce failures is rounding or constant rounding. At least once per day, areas of responsibility should have a walkthrough, usually in the morning, especially in operating rooms. Also, right before and after long holiday weekends. You should be looking for predictable failures, like equipment stacked improperly, yanked or damaged power cords, cracked equipment screens, random parts laying around on flat surfaces, because we know that doesn't happen, right? Tape on booms or hanging video displays, even stashed equipment in storage areas with broke written on post-it notes. If we find and eliminate the predictable failures, we can more easily deal with the unpredictable failures as they happen, like physical damage, because the unpredictable stuff is gonna happen anyway. One key note, only user training will ever help decrease unpredictable failures like physical damage. Remember guys, we fix people too, so guide the users with training. That's a complete rundown of the five things you can do to reduce failures. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I love feedback and ideas. Please let me know what you think about a proactive repair program. And thanks for watching. I do appreciate it.